So what I'm going to show you today uh, is how to we, like how it's possible to think about writing distributed algorithms and experimenting and iterating quickly on them, like without going into nitty gritty details of sockets and all the stuff, trading the all the just ignoring and trying to think more declaratively. What I'm not going to talk about today is how to build a production-ready decentralized IPFS indexer. That's not the goal. I don't have a solution for that, obviously. I'll try to show you how to like experiment quick, how to like think in terms of distributed algorithm and ignore all that doesn't matter. So what we have like the it's kind of hard for me to talk because we didn't have an introductory talk to, uh, to Fluence and no one explained what, what Fluence is and how Aqua works. So I'll try to real quick. Um, so we have a peer-to-peer -peer network running on Rustly P2P uh, and it has several like layers, uh, networking layer, computation layer where you can have like microservices on it and a layer of orchestration. Orchestration is the most interesting one. You can like, you things like this, you can have like a code that orchestrates, um, for example, like this, that orchestrates um, distributed system. You can like say, hey, go through those providers uh, and uh, upload uh, something to all of them, to every provider. Like you can have do this in parallel, uh, you can like wait for results, you can handle errors, you can check whether something exists or not, you can call external services, uh, you can uh, integrate, like we have integrated IPFS natively, but you can integrate any other network into the Fluence, because uh, we can call like external binaries that are on hosts, so as long as you have CLIs on hosts, you can integrate any networks and join them, and effectively making Fluence a network of networks. So uh, this how, uh, a distributed algorithm might work. This one, uh, what this one does, uh, it goes through um, some subset of the Fluence network, talks to the IPFS nodes running on them, and upload the files there, and then checks whether they ex exist, doing it in parallel, and waiting for some timeout on or a number of results at the end. I will go through details a bit later, just trying to sketch a whole picture here. So yeah, uh, that's how we can like work on distributed algorithms. So um, what I also want to, to, one of the goals I have today is to like request for comments, ideas and solutions to open problems. Like uh, if we can orchestrate easily and iterate over distributed algorithms, what do we do next? How do we like approach uh, actually decentralizing the indexers, decentralizing uh, different services. How, for example, instead of like having, maybe instead of having one big indexer for the whole network, we can have subnets and per domain indexers and uh, every app developer or whoever does something interesting can have an indexer for his own domain, for his own application and use it for, uh, use it with his users and not share it globally with everyone. So not storing petabytes of data, but just gigabytes, maybe that will work. So um, I have a kind of workshop today. Um, and uh, what it means that you can actually like go with me. You can clone this repository. I have even uh, somewhere a QR code that you can scan if you, if you wish. Uh, but it's pretty easy. It's on GitHub flu slash Fluence Labs slash indexer workshop. Well, pretty easy to, to remember, I guess. Uh, this to me, it is. Yeah, and you cl can clone, do npm install, and just follow along. Should work. Hopefully, it should work. So, um, since I like, I'm talking about content indexer. Um, it does index content. What it effectively does, it just stores for every CID that I upload, uh, it stores what nodes now store the file. Like it has this like 
association between CID and the list of uh, multi-addresses that are IPFS nodes. That would allow, for example, some app developer to uh, have uh, a set of IPFS nodes, store a file, and for example, I have 10 IPFS nodes that I want to use as a data plane, but I want to store like avatars on first three nodes with replication factor three, uh, all the like databases on fifth and sixth node and stuff like that. I can, I want to just distribute my data and want to be always uh, able to retrieve it back and know where it like stays. Okay, so um, let's let's just try and do that. Mm, how how that uh, will like will work? How the whole uh, process works? We have a like a network, a peer to peer network, and I have my laptop here. Maybe yeah, okay. And uh, I say hey. Just for this example, I will use like those nodes for just because I had a beer with their owners and we decided that we will work together and we kind of have a human agreement about that. Um, and what I want to do when I'm like, I, I'm providing a web app for people and wh whenever someone wants to upload a, a picture to my application, he will use uh, uh, AquaScript that will go through the IPFS nodes, decide uh, with what replication factor to store uh, that file and just upload it to different IPFS nodes. And on upload, uh, it will automatically add as a part of uploading process. It will, out in, a push, in a push mode, it will automatically store that this file uh, is stored on this node, on all these nodes. And um, it will use the whole network, this part of the network, to have um, services, uh, a service that store the index. So actual IPFS nodes uh, that like store the files are one part of the network, and the whole other network can be used to store information, uh, the index. Yep. So let's go through the code and see if it's like, if it makes any sense. Um, yeah. So, uploading a file. Uh, first, uh, we have like I said that uh, we have like a domain. It could be any anything. Like I want to to call my uh, my application index, for example, or or I could call it like Telegram or whatever. Uh, and I want to to associate some nodes. Uh, with this domain and say, hey, I will use, use those nodes uh, for my application. I may later pay them somehow or just have some different agreement with them, but I will use them, they will serve me. That's kind of solved question that let's just assume that it is. And we use uh, a kind of, first we started to use like DHT for that goal to store the routing information. But then it, uh, we understood that there is kind of tragedy of commons happens where, where everyone uses DHT and why would nodes like provide their DHT uh, to store the routing information? They will just evict it and you won't have it anymore. So instead of that, this, uh, I have an agreement with nodes and they will serve the indexing service that I implemented in Rust and deploy it to them. And uh, th those nodes are stored in, in all over the network, I can always resolve them by uh, my domain name. And so I will always uh, like know where those nodes are and how to access uh, my indexing service. Okay, so once I have those nodes that have the indexing service, I can actually go and upload them uh, a file to, to their IPFS nodes and store information about uh, where the file is stored to index. So how that works? Uh, I go, go through every node that I work with in parallel, uh, and uh, I retrieve its uh, multi-address of its IPFS node, and I say, hey, okay, uh, now let's upload a file that I have locally on my laptop to every of those nodes. Of those nodes. So, uh, and that uploading uh, mechanics is implemented as uh, implemented as a JavaScript code that I have 
locally on my laptop. So it transfers file to every IPFS node that's running on the Fluence network from my local laptop. And uh, the beauty of this like script is that it could be a file not from my laptop, it could be a file like from any, any other computer. Instead of uploading it locally to those nodes, I could retrieve it from some other remote node directly to the nodes that are in the network. And that would like change just a, a code just a little bit. Like here, the code says, go to my local laptop through the entry point that I'm using to connect to the network and upload the file to remote IPFS node. I could change it to some more complex logic and say, for example, um, if I know that the file uh, stays on my entry point node, that's called host pure ID, um, it will actually take a file from that host and upload it to IPFS nodes instead of using my laptop. So that's like a very, very small change, but it's kind of a profound one because you change the whole topology of the uh, orchestration that you have here. Okay. So once uh, we, we have like this thing just goes through several IPFS nodes and uploads a file to there, and then it waits for files to be uploaded or like uh, if no, some of the nodes go down, they might not answer me. So it waits for timeout and then goes on. And then we uh, go to an index service and store that information to uh, every index that we have. Like we have uh, the indexing service distributed across the network. So it's not like a single uh, index uh, instance, but uh, like it's replicated and I have like tens of them uh, out there. So if some, any of it goes down, that's fine, I will still have my replication factor that I want. So, um, yeah, and that uh, indexing service, it's implemented in Rust and uh, compiled to WebAssembly and deployed to all the nodes. Um, so it's possible for anyone to host that index service by just retrieving uh, the WebAssembly file from IPFS and deploying it to his own node and just using it, just uh, becoming a part of that indexing protocol, kind of, and uh, serve the purpose of the application that I'm building. So that's kind of a push model instead of pull. Not, uh, so, so every user to upload a file will run that script in their browser or, or on their mobile device. And every time he uploads a file, he pushes the data to index. So instead of like, waiting for um, discovery to happen or traversing the network constantly, it's done right away on upload. So you can, um, this way, clients become like orchestrators of the backends they use. Okay. So, and let's, let's just, well, try, try to do exactly that. Let's just upload some file so for example, I, I, I want to upload this file, the package lock. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, so I have like a file package lock that, that I just updated because I was like updating the versions of my libraries and I want to upload it. It will start the um, aqua run, CLI tool. Uh, what it does, it, it says, hey, I have a function somewhere in these source, source files. Uh, the name of the function is upload to subnet and just take the local path, the very this path, read it to memory and send to IPFS nodes. And it also pins aggressively because I, I had some troubles with pinning. It uh, also, as we have seen, there was a like cycle through the provider nodes that we can upload to and once it uploaded, it sent a message back to my local laptop with a logging instruction to say that, hey, we have uploaded to this. So this way we can report progress. We can stream uh, data and progress and anything we want, send some events along the execution. 
So we uh, don't just wait for response to happen. We might not even have response. Uh, that's totally possible too. Like uh, you can program it in a way that there is no response to my client. It just goes to the network, does some effects there and stays. No need to, to give me response if I don't want it. But in, in this particular case, because I wanted to show the progress, I wanted the response. So I received the first slug that said, hey, we upload to the file. Then I received uh, a second message that said, hey, we also added those providers to index. So now we have, uh, we have association between the uh, CID, this one, and those uh, providers. And it's all stored on several copies of an indexer service out there. So what we can do now? We can always retrieve the index, right? And it's also calling aquaran uh, just with a function get domain index. Whoops. Because I didn't specify the CID. Yeah, so. You see, it, it, it calls a function and passes environment variable CID there, and I didn't pass it on the first time. Instead, I was passing file. Okay, so we have the same index, so it's pretty fast. You can just like say, hey, give me an index, and every provider will start streaming your results, and you can use them as they come. So you don't have to wait for all the uh, responses from all the nodes. You can just stream everything. You, uh, yeah, we have like, streams in the language, and they allow you to allow you to uh, have concurrent executions that happen when new data arrives. Okay, great. So now we have an index, but what if some of the nodes they lose the data, like something bad happens and someone removes the data? Let's just try to do that. We'll just unpin a file. I know that's not very secure to provide uh, RPC to outer world, but hey, why not? Okay, so we unpinned from one node, we can take another node and unp unpin it from there too. Did I use the same node? Yeah. Great, so now we have an index that's not correct. What do we do now? There is a way uh, to calculate who's absent uh, given the index. So like who's absent in the sense that which nodes has lost, have lost the file. I will show how, how that code works in a moment because it's pretty interesting. Um, let's copy the CID again. Now we, uh, I want to like get a list uh, of nodes that actually lost that file. And now we have unpinned the file from two nodes, MX and ZQ, and the AquaScript detected that they are exactly absent. How did that work? So I have uh, an absent function here. No, that's Rust. That's not an Aqua. Yeah. What it does, it resolves indexer services again, like uh, taking the domain and it asks the network, hey, give me the locations of the index service, um, retrieves the index from those providers and then goes through them um, and asks, hey, does the file exist? It was kind of hard part because IPFS doesn't have API for file existence. So I, I had to implement it like, like this uh, in JS. Like I, I just do a pin ls uh, and if it's unpinned, then I conclude that the file doesn't exist. So what happens in, the, in this script is I go through all the providers and from my laptop, I ask them, hey, do you have this file? Do you have this file? And you know, that's not very efficient way to do that because what if my laptop uh, network is bad? Yeah, but that's a way to iteratively experiment on an algorithm. Like you, you can start simple. You can start uh, implement by implementing a service that works with IPFS 
in JavaScript on your laptop. But then if you think, hey, this is a good algorithm, it works well, but maybe not very efficient because of all these topology hubs, you can just take that JavaScript service, rewrite it in Rust or uh, any other little language that compiles to WebAssembly, deploy it to the network and change that script just a little bit like that. For example, if providers, if every provider has a service that talks to IPFS, we could just do that and it will work. And it will just work. Uh, and we already have designed the algorithm. Uh, we have like iterated on pinning, unpinning, made some decisions. And when we want to make it more production ready, more like a better, we can just change a little bit, but the whole logic will stay the same. Okay. So we did check that uh, I, where file exists and where not, and we sent streamed the data back to my laptop, and we received like this information. So now, what do we do? How do we repair the index? There are like two ways to do that, like logical ways. First one is to alter the index and remove nodes that have lost the file from the index. And another one, I think that's a more interesting one, is to go through the index and detect who's, who has lost the file and download the file back to them from the nodes that have the file, not from my local laptop, but from the nodes who have the file. Let's try to do that. And like, I'll, I want to show you a difference in like topology. So uh, when I was running the uploading script, it was working like this. It went to one, one of the entry point uh, nodes in the network, and then it sent messages to nodes uh, on the network. And they say, said, hey, I have IPFS node. Here's its address. You can upload something to there. And I did that uploading directly from my laptop to their IPFS APIs. That's one way of doing it. But when I'm, I'm doing like a repair, what I, I'm actually, I, I'm doing a different topology approach. Like I'm commanding the network, hey, can you heal itself? Here's a script how to do that. Can you just s download the file to the nodes that have lost it from the ones that still have it? So we can do both ways and Initially, when I was like just developing this example, I started uh, to do repair very same way as I did IPFS upload. But then I thought, hey, this, that's not efficient and not very interesting. So I just moved that service to the network, just rewrote it in Rust and it, it became more distributed and uh, started to work faster. Okay, so let's, let's see if we have nodes still absent or it, whether it did repair. Yep, so we can see that there are no more absent nodes and we can like even do pin ls just to see that it really happened and I am not lying to you, yeah. So we did pin rm and now we doing pin ls and we see that the file is, is indeed there. So let me show how repair uh, looks in the code. So as I said, we, we go through, we like retrieve the index, we check which nodes still have the file, uh, and we go through all the nodes that lost the file in parallel, and we try to download the file from every node that has still, that, that still have that file. So we're basically doing like two iteration loops, two loops, first one through uh, absent nodes, and the second one through nodes that still have the file. And we say uh, on absent node, you see the, this, this on instruction, it says go topologically to that peer and execute that function on that peer. And in that case, I'm going to absent, absent node, a node that doesn't have a file. And I say, hey, use your local IPFS CLI binary to tell your site card IPFS node to download a file from a present node, from a node that has the file. 
and I'm doing that in parallel, and that may as well be not very efficient, right? Because for every node that doesn't have a file, I ask all of the nodes that have a file. So if there are like two absent nodes and multitude like thousand nodes who still have the file, that wouldn't be very efficient. But I can like iterate on that, right? I can put some heuristics uh, here and uh, I can, for example, have a local service written in JavaScript that for every interaction with any IPFS node stores some metrics on their latency. And I can try to use that information to wait who to ask and who not to ask to restore the file. And if I decide that, hey, this is a, a great approach, uh, having the metrics, okay, I can move that metric server to the network, just rewriting it to WebAssembly, and then everyone can do the same. And I can, as I said, my goal here is not to show you a solution to greatest indexer or to just any indexer. My uh, goal is to show you the thinking that you can write this simple code that operates across multitude of nodes. It doesn't really care how many nodes here. It would still work in parallel and pretty fast, no matter how many how many nodes are there. Yeah. Question, how would you um, just some pick at random some set of of the other nodes of the present ones, mm -hmm. and then try until it succeeds with some time after, then try others. Yeah, you could you could do that. Uh, we we don't have, for example, here's a limitation uh, that not limitation, like right now Aqua doesn't have anything to manipulate lists. Yeah, and that could be not very, like, that could be very uncomfortable to, to program with. But uh, we can just implement a, a service that can, like, we can call it list operations, like, and that can be a function, get random, it would take a list, and I'm not sure how to, like, and I don't care, like, like this, yeah? pretty random number, randomly. Uh, and I would take that service, describe it in Aqua, like this. And here I would say, hey, give me a random, uh, random portion of, of the present nodes. Right. Like present. Right. And instead uh, of using present here, why do you like, don't like it? Ah, okay. And uh, instead of using like the whole present array here, I I would use this random part. Right. It, it would. Yeah. That's fine. Just some type safety here. And you can express, and you, you, you asked a little bit more complex question, like how, how to try like some portion, then another portion, then another portion by timeout, right? Yeah, you can still code that. That would take some time and some mind bending because you, on every portion you have to think about how to exactly do timeouting and then take a, another portion. I would, I guess, uh, do something like not get random, but like get random chunks. So it would return not uh, one list of providers, but several. And for every list, I would iterate and try it. And if it doesn't succeed, I would get next list. It would take like a 10, 15 minutes to implement here because it like, so I wouldn't Can go there. Can some language with things like this? Like for example, um, so in this section where you're, just being able to run some code in all nodes is very useful. Being able to take a set of candidate nodes sort them by some quality metric mm -hmm. where you use some features about them to be able to um, arrive at a sorted set and then try try to run something on them where you can treat all of them as the same, mm -hmm. but either with some amount of parallelism or some amount of um, bounded wait time. Mm -hmm. Those seem like very useful peer-to-peer -peer programming yeah. primitives that you, that you would like want to enhance the language of. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we're we're like, this is a living language. It's like become became stable and fast a few months ago. So it still has uh, missing some features like array manipulation and what you described, uh, like just doing the syntactical. Sh it, it all couldn't be implemented, but it would take time. But 
we sure need some have to add some sun, uh, syntax sugar to that. So so it's easier to to do manipulations you're talking about and uh, about like quality metrics and like weighted uh, sorting. We have like uh, thoughts about how to approach uh, protection from Sybil attacks and by waiting and having some reputation system. And we're like right now where I was doing like get providers here in pin sets file here, this thing would also integrate the trust graph and it would return weights for every peer. And that weight, it would be subjective for my peer or for nodes that I trust. For example, uh, you, uh, I trust protocol labs and protocol labs say, hey, those peers are nice. And like, uh, I don't know, parity says, those peer, peers are nice too and I trust them as well. And some, I would have like weights for every peers assigned indirectly. I didn't know about those peers but you did know, uh, party did know, so I, I have weighted them and I can use them for like, prefer them over some random peers. Yeah. So I guess, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, let me show how, how do I, let me just remove all that stuff. Um, let me show how I did deploy. Actually, when I was like doing this uh, example, this workshop, we have some tools that uh, assist you in deploying and managing configuration files and uh, IDs and like this kind of cloud control plane CLI stuff. But it didn't have all the features that I wanted it to have. So I kind of rewrote it in several hours in Aqua. And this is the deployment system that, uh, like a deployment function that takes a list of peers and uh, a local service that could say where to get WebAssembly files. Um, and for, like I have this JSON file that describes the service that I'm deploying. It's the Rust service that has two, uh, two modules one is the indexing and another one is collide. So it's basically, let me show the code. Maybe I'm answering too detailed, but still, I think that's pretty interesting. So I have this Rust code. It's an indexer uh, code that just uses SQLite underneath. It could use instead uh, in memory hash table, but I think using SQLite here more versatile because you can actually download the SQLite database, put it to IPFS and replicate across the indexers. I didn't get to that, but it's still possible. So that's a, a, a service written in Rust. And that's a configuration file that says how to build that service from WebAssembly files, how to deploy it. And this is a script that can deploy that service to that set of peers. And that set of peers could be anything. And how it works, it goes through uh, all the modules that I have in config, two modules. Uploads, uh, uploads them to every uh, node that I have here in peers, uh, and then just creates uh, a, ser a service from it. So like, where does it create? Yeah, so we're going through every peer that we have uploaded modules uh, to, like we upload modules to IPFS, and then every peer downloads the modules from IPFS, takes them as a list, and just, creates a service from that list. This is basically a configuration file for a service, and then a peer can create a service from that configuration file, from WebAssembly modules that live on IPFS. And you can like create that service, call function, and kill it, or it can, it can be a long-running service until you want it. So this way you can manage like any strategy of deployment, uh, what you, whatever you can imagine, like, if you want to deploy on every second node in the network and they allow you to, you can do that. If you, so that's up to you uh, to decide the strategy of deployment, but we were, will sure give some primitives to do that. Um, the, the nice thing about Aqua is that all the uh, algorithms 
when you write them, you can just publish them to NPM or to whatever your favorite package manager is and just reuse them. So if you like write in a research paper and you decide, hey, this is a nice strategy to de for deploying services, you just, you, you write a paper and also you, you push the code that you just wrote to NPM and everyone can reuse the distributed algorithm that you have. And it will be abstracted over the actual implementation. It will be declarative like that. Hope that answers the question. <laughs>